have you with us because this is the day the Lord has made and we are made to rejoice in it. In Isaiah 55, the Bible says, Ho! Oh. I, like, I like that version. It begins with the Ho! Oh. Everyone who thirst, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy and wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure masses of David. I'm just leaving that passage of scripture as a background of where we are. God continually invite us to come and he expect us to come just the way we are. Even having no money is no excuse because God is inviting us to a feast. God is inviting us to a plan. He is inviting us to a, 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 a purpose that he would want fulfilled and accomplished by us. It doesn't depend on you. It doesn't depend on me. He calls you. He finances his call. So he is inviting you and he's telling you where you're coming. You can eat, you can drink, you can feast without money. And that is very important to understand. The deep revelation there, if you remember what Jesus was saying in John chapter 7, verse 37, he says, let him who thirst come and drink. You can connect this prophecy with the fulfillment of the prophecy. Isaiah is saying, there will come a time that you will no need money to eat, to drink, to buy wine, to buy milk, but you only need to come to the source. You see the key there? Jesus come and fulfills this scripture. He says, come, let him who thirst comes to me now. You remember what he told the, Samar no, the Samaritan woman? He who thirst can have a drink from me which you will never thirst again. This is the promise fulfilled. And of course, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. And it is the Holy Spirit who connects you to the source of what the kingdom of God has to offer for his children. Everything has been provided for. It is the means of accessing the blessings that we have a challenge with. Ephesians chapter 1 again, we are coming to that revelation again. Blessed be God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. What are these spiritual blessings in heavenly places? In Christ Jesus. It means when God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, it is include everything that we need. Is that correct? What do we need? It is the basics. What you drink, what you eat, what to wear, is that is there. The labor that you're engaged in is labor in vain. It cannot even meet your basic need. That's what the scripture in Isaiah is saying. The source is me. And if you come to me, you will 
be fulfilled. You find something to drink, something to eat, and you also have profitable labor. And you can see very clearly it is a fulfillment of prophecy. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that pertaining to drinking, to eating, to wearing, to living, everything as you come to the source has been already provided for. Why do you labor? Why do you struggle? The source is revealed to us. See how Jesus put it when he comes. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Come. And I will do what? Come and learn of me, for I am meek, lowly at heart. Put my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I will give you rest. How do you get rest? It's when you have something to drink, something to eat, somewhere to sleep, somewhere you're comfortable, that your basic needs, at least they have been fulfilled. How else, other than coming to the kingdom? How else do you come to the kingdom other than to come into the person who is the symbol of the kingdom? He says, I am the one, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So it can't be anywhere else. It is not in the oil of the Middle East. It is not in the gold and the minerals in South Africa. It's not in coffee and tea in Kenya. The wealth is found in the treasure that is hidden in you and me. And if you know him, then that is why Paul is saying, blessed be God, where well spoken of God be God. Why? He has blessed us with those spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus because in that realm where we live with Christ, Ephesians 2, 6, we have been raised together with him and we live in him in that realm. That realm has everything for us, but they are in spiritual form. So it is your responsibility and my responsibility to translate the spiritual provision that God has provided for us that pertains to the things that we need to physical material things. Is this too deep for us to understand? Are you getting it? Everything that you need come to you if you are receiving from God. It is come through spiritual means. So you must have a capacity, ability to translate the spiritual realm to the physical realm. And that's what it takes for a child of God never to lack, ever supplied, ever shielded from the challenges that is in the world. And God has given us that assurance, Second Peter chapter, chapter 1, verse 3. He, by his divine power, he has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. By his divine power, he has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. Hallelujah. I want to see how God is so generous, how God is so gracious, how God is so rich in ensuring that everything we need, we can access. Romans chapter 8, verse 32, you remember that? He who did not spare his son, but he freely gave him up for us, how will he also by him give us freely all things for us to be sorrowful? See it. For us to have good time. For us to have banquet upon banquet, celebration upon celebration, rejoicing after celebrating rejoicing. Why? Every need has been provided for through Christ. 
He who knew no sin became sin so that we can become the righteousness of God so that the barrier, the blockage of the blessings of God towards us because of the fall and separation from God has already been removed. Glory to God. How has it been removed? Ephesians 1, 4. He has blessed us with our spiritual blessings. One of the major spiritual blessings you need to know and never forget is Ephesians 1, 4. He chose us before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless. Hear this? In his sight. He chose you. He knew you encounter the, fall, the, 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 the fallen nature, the Adamic nature. He knew that. But in advance, he prepared a place for you. Before the foundation of the world, he had already secured a place in access to him. He chose us, right, when we were not born. And he also knew we would be born with a sinful nature and we'll also be handicapped somewhere. But because God had a plan for you, had a plan for me, he ordained before the time comes that the process and the fulfillment of what God wanted to do and accomplish was in Christ. That is what we are talking about. He has a plan for us. And that plan is for good, not for evil. To give us a hope and a future. And that hope and a future is that provision that God has already made for all of us who are his children. Having chosen us and we are now, we are not holy by ourselves. You know that, don't you? And I know you don't feel holy even though you are in church. <laughs> but he says, in my sight, as long as you are in Christ, you are blameless and holy. The challenge many believers have is to feel that and experience it and profess it and become it. Because that is the process. You must know it, you must experience it, you must feel it, you must express it, you must just express it. If you begin there now, it will open the gates of the other spiritual blessings to come through. And these are deep revelations that Apostle Paul got from God for the church. This was not for the Old Testament. They never knew anything like that. It was hidden until our age. That is what Paul was talking about. The mystery. In chapter 3, he's talking about the mysteries that I have talked about earlier. You have read. Where? It's chapter 1. Isn't it? And they are there, enumerated for us. And I have given some of them, if you care to follow my, my, my social media, I have given those blessings. They are very open. They are very clear. Isn't it? When you are chosen, the next thing is, he predestined that you may do what? You may be adopted as a son of God. Did you contribute anything? Is it because you got saved? Did, is it because you received Christ? Or you gave your life to Christ? Some of us are good enough to say we gave our life to Christ. So he gave us eternal life. Where did you get the life from and you are dead? How can you give life and you yourself, you were dead? We were dead in our transgressions, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 tells us. How do you come and tell us and testify boldly and, and, and saying hallelujah, in the midst there, I gave my life to the Lord this and this year. <laughs> uh -uh, you were given life because you were dead. Hallelujah. And when you see it that way, then it rekindles something in you that changes everything around you. This God who began this work, he says he predestined that we may be adopted in to become God's son. If God predestined, he continued to say, according to the pleasure of his will. He did that so that he can enjoy it. Hallelujah. He did that so that the devil can feel, you had taken this one, now I have taken them back. I have redeemed them back for myself. It was for his pleasure. And if it was for his pleasure, let me ask you a simple question, brethren. Would God fail to fulfill it? 
Would God predestine to do it? And then he's, he's, he comes to a place that said, I wanted to do it, but I failed. Is, there, is it possible? So if he predestined, it must come to pass. Do you believe he predestined that you become a child of God? Of course, you are one of them. How did you become one? Because before you became, he had already predestined and put everything in mechanism, everything required for you to become a child of God. And a child of God, blameless before him, in love. Hallelujah. So that's why when he look at you, he doesn't see you, he sees Christ. I know you can be panicking now and you're thinking, I've become a, the, the, the grace preacher. No, it is the true grace. The true grace cannot be dismissed by people abusing grace. The power of grace cannot be dismissed because of people abusing grace. Grace did that for us. Hallelujah. And when the, the grace that delivered you from, the, uh, from death and from sin and sicknesses, when you embrace it, when you understand it, you don't abuse it. Isn't it? You treasure that grace. That's why we are here in church and that's why we are learning these things. That Christ has done this for us. These are spiritual blessings already made provision for, for us. So that we can be free from sin. Is that what the Bible says? Yeah. Romans 6 says, knowing this. That the old man was crucified with Christ. Therefore, to put away the old man who was sinning. So grace did away with the old man and the one who was sinning. So that you are no longer a slave of sin. So how can you sin again? Paul says, does grace mean now we can go ahead and sin and just go to church and sing and, and pray? No. He says grace is the enabling power to overcome the power of sin alone. Nothing else. So if you have the grace, you can overcome sin. So don't fear to say you are a child of God. You are chosen before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before God. And when you wake up in the morning, you just feel like that. You go to the meal and you feel like that. And you remind yourself and you tell you, guy, you are holy and blameless before God today. So when you are going out, watch out. That's the way you live a Christian life. You don't contaminate yourself because you have been made blameless. You would want to preserve that blamelessness. If there is such a word. So you walk diligently, carefully. Why? Working out your salvation with the fear and trembling. Paradiventure, I don't abuse what? This grace. Glory to God. So when you are now a child of God, you have been transferred from another one kingdom to another kingdom already. You are predestined to be adopted into the family of God. So divine adoption comes, you having done absolutely nothing. Hallelujah. Then it is followed by God exceedingly, abundantly, lavishly pouring his grace upon you. So that now you can be accepted in his beloved. Praise God. And when you now know you are accepted in his beloved, I was reminding you yesterday, uh, last Sunday, and I will remind you this Sunday, and possibly next Sunday I will remind you, because if you know this, it changes your life. He lavished his grace upon you, poured his exceeding graciousness towards you. So that now, when he, he accepted you in Christ, that means... The way he has accepted Christ as his son is the way he accepts you as his son. You parent, you are here, you know, if you have two signs, you don't favor one from the other. The way he accepts Christ, he is the way expect you as his son or his daughter, if you like. But as many as received him, they were given what? The right and authority to become the sons of God. So all of us, we are sons of God. So whenever we appear to God, we are sons of God. Whenever Jesus appears to God, he is a son of God. Hallelujah. But there is a distinction there. He is the firstborn. Glory to God. He made a way for us. Therefore, he has a privilege of becoming the firstborn. After those who have been raised from death, all of us. I was praying that I don't get caught up there, but I'm already there. I don't know how to come out of it, and I'm... I will, I will seek grace to come out. But the fact that 
This thing you are saying, knowing our position in Christ, it is so powerful. It is so powerful if only you dare just to embrace it as what it is. Not just academic, not just information, not just knowing, but experiencing the effect that it has in your life. And as you get to know that, all these other blessings I said, they're there, you can find them. So if you are accepted in the beloved, he went ahead and just lavished you again the grace. All of this God was doing because of his grace towards us. And he was helping us to know how much he cares, how much he loves us, and how much he wants us to accomplish the plan and the purpose that he has for humanity. Would you like to say amen? So having known that and what God is telling us now, that is why he will not shy away from empowering us to live like what he has made us to, be, to become. He has now given us authority so that we can resist and subdue the forces of darkness that desires to bring you back to the state that you were delivered. What was that? You were in darkness. You are without Christ. You are without God. You are outside the people of God. And the enemy is working 24-7 to make sure that you come back to the kingdom or under dominion of darkness. But God has graciously spoken well over you. In Colossians 1.13, and he says, he has, I have delivered you from the kingdom or from dominion of darkness into the kingdom of my the sun I love, the kingdom of light. That's where we are. So if only you just operate where you are there, you are fine. You are okay. And all these things has nothing to do with your riches, has nothing to do with your education, has nothing to do with your class in the society. It has none of them. It is actually knowing who you are in Christ that actually produces the true worth of you to the society. Can I say that again? It's not your education. It's not the family that you were born that makes you the real, the, the, to have the real world that God has given you or invested in you through Christ. No, it is Christ first. Then these other things come later. Wisdom without Christ is nothing. Money without Christ is nothing. Riches and wealth without Christ is nothing. So it is Christ first. You and I have privileged we have an advantage. We already have Christ. And because we have Christ, all these other things now can come to us in a legitimate way, in a way that comes to satisfy. Our labor is not labor that does not satisfy. We don't even need money to buy milk and honey. It comes because we are connected to the source. And when you're connected to the source, you don't buy. That is why if you're a child of God, you're not supposed to struggle with the money. I saw that and I, it blew my mind. You're not supposed to struggle with the money. I know that is going to make some people angry. What do you mean and you know how I struggled this week? You're not supposed to. You only need to know who you are and what money is. Money is supposed to be your servant, but you allow it to be your master. That's why you can't find it. I'm sure you got what I said. That's why we are struggling with money, all of us. We have not known our position. We are the master and the money is the servant. Why is it it can hear and obey us? Something is missing on our end. Because when money, be I don't know where that has come from, but it has, must be from the Lord. Ecclesiastes 10, 19 talked about that. Money answereth all things. And if money answereth all things and you are the master, you can command the money to answer all things. Power and authority is in you, not money. We have been brainwashed by the world that money has power. No, money has no power. Glory to God. We have been blessed with all things pertaining to life and Godliness, including what? Authority to have dominion. And authority to have dominion ensures and position you to be able to have authority over an animal called money. That's not my topic today. But you must be able to know how do you translate in the spiritual dimension what constitutes money now to the real money here. That's where we are missing it. 
Because we are running after the physical money other than the real money. The spiritual money, when you got it, you're good to go. You don't need it. You don't need, okay, if you have the spiritual money, you don't need the physical money. But that doesn't mean you do not have money. But it comes now after you have been satisfied at the, in the spiritual dimension where you are now walking according to the patterns and the standards that God has already put in place for you. In other words, Ninasema, Sisi, Si Watum Watena, Tumekombolewa, Nakama Sisi Nuana wa Mungu, Hakika Mungu Ame, Tiari, Amefanya Juhudi Ju Chini, Kuakikisha Kwamba Wewe, who is Kuishi, Kama Kwaufukala, Ama, Kwakushindua. I wanted to read for you that scripture. I, I forgot to read it for you. Psalms 84. Let me, from verse 10, it sounds good. For a day in your court is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tent of wickedness. Why would you want to dwell in the court of the house of God? Because for the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he with you hold for those who walk uprightly. God is not a man that he should lie. Kama mesema hutakuwa utapungukiwa ukitembea kwa utakatifu yasimama hiyo dio ukweli. The challenge is on our side, not the source. Now, if you don't go to the liver to get water, you don't complain that yakuna maji. There is plenty of water, especially now. If you can be found claiming that there is no water around, you are a liar. <laughs> and that is the way we need to have our, an awareness. Nadio, tunasema, the knowledge we need is to know who we are and what belongs to us. Because if you know that, you are secure. But for you to get what belongs to you, that's why we said you need authority. Right? I'm trying to build my message now to come to our authority in Christ. And that is my topic today. Our authority in Christ. Because it is our authority in Christ that empower us to get every spiritual blessings that God has ordained or provided for us in heavenly places. So if you have this authority and you are able to exercise it, guaranteed to the measure of your knowledge of that authority is the measure of your provision in your life. Can I put it again? It is to the level of your light or knowledge that you know about the authority God has given you in Christ that give you access to the things that you can enjoy. All of us, we are not in the same level. Why? We are operating at different levels of authority. That is why some are higher, others are low. Why? Because the light in them, or the knowledge, or the revelation that they have, they have is above us. Dion Nasema, wewe jitahidi yako ya kujua neno, na kujua ukweli, na kujua mpangirio ya mungu katika maisha yako. Hiyo diyo inafungulia mulango wa ufanisi wako. Sindiyo? Na kama wewe hutatafuta mungu. Hapo tulisema Isaiah 55 verse 6. Seek the Lord when he may be found. Na kama badu unasikia hiyo neno, ni yako kwa wakati huu. Tafuta buwana wakati, anaweza patikana. Na ni huu wakati sasa. Wakati kuna mafuriko. Diyo mungu anaweza patikana zaidi. Hallelujah. Na ukitafuta mungu, anaedelea kusema, call upon me, and I will answer you. It's the same thing to the owner in Jeremiah 29. He says, I know the plans that I have. They are for good. It is to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. Right? Did he stop there? No. Then he says, you will go and pray to me. We were reminded here we need to pray. 
And as we pray, God is going to answer us. When we pray, we go a step further and we seek him. Why? As we seek him, we are seeking the kingdom. And as we seek the kingdom, all these other things begin to kutufuata. <laughs> That's the way you enjoy life. These are not he has says. He sees stories our bunuazi. He dia ukweli wa mambo. And God sometimes gets shocked that he finds us stuck, worried, fearful, like everybody else. Why should we? Knowing this, that you have been delivered. Hmm? Knowing this, that Christ has provided for you. Why wouldn't you reach out and get it? Nupugufu wa mamlaka. Hallelujah. Kwa sababu, kuna pingamizi. Shetani hawezi kukuachilia tu atu itajirike tu akiona kwa macho na wewe huko katika ufalume wake a uh-uh, atapigana na wewe na tuliambiwa kuna mapepo ambaye inapinga hmm? so ukijua hivyo sasa ni kuanza kutafuta kwani hii huyu Mungu ana, ana, anafanya kazi kivipi ujue jia zake kwa sababu ukijua jia zake utajua jia ya kupata yale mambo ako naye si ndio Na diposa, again tukakubushwa hapo, Isaiah 55 is very powerful, very powerful. And I'm coming to the point of that whole chapter. He says, my ways are higher than your ways. That is why you don't come where I am. Hello? You are still walking in your ways, you can't come to God's way. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. That is why you can't think the way I think to get what I get. Are you getting it? He is a fundishwa gumu kila mmoja wetu anasaelewa, si ndio? Now, the thing that we don't want to 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 to, to face is this. Why are we our ways not God's ways? Not because God has his own different ways. No, it is because we we have something that does not agree with his ways that is why we can't find it. What is that? It is very clear there in that scripture. He says, let the wicked man turn away from his ways so that he may know my ways. Did you see it? What about evil thoughts? Why is it that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts? Is it because he created us to have evil thoughts? No, we have allowed the enemy to plant the evil thoughts. What is the remedy? God says, let the evil man turn away from what? His evil thought. Not even ways. It's very clear. It's very clear. Let the evil man turn away from evil thought. Any thought that is contrary to God is evil. Is that correct? When God wants you to be rich and you're calling yourself poor, that is an evil thought. Where has it come from? Not you. You are a good person. You are saved, I know. But you listen to the wrong person. God says you are rich, the devil says you are poor, you choose to believe the devil. That's what we saw last time. And it's so easy for us, we do that many times. God says, let the poor say, I am rich. And the devil says, let the rich say, I am poor. So you go this song of the devil. Sorry, you di- the people I'm talking about are kuja kanisani. Wala wanaiba hiyo wibo haku fika leo kanisani. Kuna wibo wili, sindi yo kasabu, kingdom ni bili. Upenda usipende. Kuna ile inasema kinyume na kuna ile inasema ukweli. You only enjoy ile umechagua, si ndio? So if you listen to this end, there is what is going to be the consequence. And that's what I said, you better be in the kingdom because the kingdom has everything that you need. You don't have to to go and visit the kingdom of darkness. There's nothing there. That's why you came from there. Si ukweli. So Ile mamulaka mungu ametupatia. It is what he gave to Christ for us. So that those battles that we are fighting and we are losing, we can begin to win them hands down. That's what we were talking about last Sunday. And I build on that. Because we are declared by God to be in Christ. All that God said concerning Christ, he has said also concerning us. Did you see that? All that God has said about Christ and his authority, he has said about you. Why? You are in Christ. 
That is a key to revival. That is a key to dominion. That is a key to operating above the parameters and the, 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 the field where the enemy has domain. All things that what God has said about Christ, he has declared about you because he can't separate you from Christ. You are already in Christ. For example, he said, all authority in heaven has been given to me. Jesus said that, isn't it? Who gave him? The Father. Does he have the all authority? Yes. What did Jesus do with the authority? Because we are in him, he gave all authority to us. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 23 is very clear. How did he give it to us? Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I have been given all authority in heaven, therefore I am giving it to you. You can't say you don't have it. You are a liar. He gave it to you. He received it on your behalf because he knew you are in him. And therefore he told you when you are in me, you have all authority to tread upon scorpions and the serpent and the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Either God is true or he is a liar. But he can't be a liar. He is actually the truth. So everything he gave to Christ, he has also given you. What else did he give to Christ? He gave Christ authority over the devil. Is that correct? It is in your Bible. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. That's what the Bible says. The seed of a woman shall crush and bruise the head of serpent. Who is the seed of the woman? It is Christ. Did Christ crush the, the, the head of the serpent? Yes. Where? Colossians 1, 14, 15. He crushed the head of the serpent. What about you and me who are poor here, who are being tormented by the demonic spirit? Do we have that capacity to defeat the devil in the same way? No. Hear what the Bible says. Satan was bruised, fully wounded beneath the feet of Christ. Right? So we are in agreement. He did it. Or you are still doubting. If he did it, where were you when he was doing that? You are in him, yes. You died with the Christ. You are buried with the Christ. You are raised together with the Christ. So you are raised together with him in the heavenly places when you are both of you a winner. Why were you saying we are a winner? And the devil cannot have his way in our lives. This morning, that's the song you are singing, you people. I heard you when I was outside there. I am a winner. Eh? And the devil done, can do nothing. What, what did you mean? That's it. If Christ defeated the devil, you also defeated the devil. If you are in him, you defeated him. Hallelujah. It's just a question of knowing God has done this in Christ. Therefore, you begin to see in a mirror of the word, he has also done it in me. That is very clear. If you look at the now, I'm proving you from the scriptures. Satan is legally placed under the feet of Christ. We have seen that. If you want another one, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22. See, we saw that on Sunday. I'll not go back there. He is under his feet. Where are you at this time when the devil is under Christ's feet? So you are in Christ, hidden in God. Hallelujah. So the devil is under whose feet? And the devil is under whose feet? Your neighbor? That's it. If you just see it, that's what you get. Hallelujah. And if he is under your feet, then you need to prove. You can also prove from the scriptures. The devil was bruised under Christ's feet. How about us? Romans chapter 6, chapter 16, verse 20. I want you to see graphically how this is fulfilled in a real way that you're able to identify. Judah, are you there? Romans chapter 16, verse 20. How did you bruise the enemy? Because I know you are wondering. Jesus did it, but what about me? Okay, I will show you. What does the Bible say? And the God of peace. Hallelujah. I like this. It's very clear. I mean, you can't miss it. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Now, that shortly means as soon as you get the revelation. 
It doesn't mean shortened for everyone. Because not everybody who is operating at that level. So you must get the revelation yourself shortly because I am bringing it to you now. So you don't have to leave that door not knowing that the enemy has been bruised under your feet. Already if you have got the revelation, he, that's where he belongs. You go home knowing, ah, I went to church today after being tormented last night or in the morning by the enemy. But I'm going back knowing the devil has no room. He is under my feet. Glory to God. God is going to do it shortly. And he, is, he has promised he would do it. I'm trying to prove to us all that Christ got from God, he has given it to us. It's not God, Christ alone. And you can even confirm that with Psalms 91. Psalms 91, we still see our position in, in Christ. He says, 91 verse 13, You shall trend upon the lion and the cobbler, <laughs> the young lion and the serpent, the old serpent. You shall do what? Trend upon the head. It's clear. The problem, Nikutu Amini, they do not know. Hmm? That's why they live in the darkness. Hmm? And the foundation of the world are being shaken. Hallelujah. But you are no longer in that company. Glory to God. You need to know who you are in Christ. It's not as easy as it is sound. It is so deep. It is so complicated. It's not for the weak. It is for the strong. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ukisha faham ujue wewe ni nani. Na ile mamlaka wewe ukonae. Hakuna shida tena. Hakuna kuofia tena. The young lion and the serpent shall you, you who is in Christ. He didn't say the archbishop. He said, you who is in Christ shall tremble under your foot. Glory to God. Do I still have to prove to you that all that Christ got, you got it already? See, that is enough proof. It is us who have not come to that realization. Do you Ah, kube, ni mimi huyu. And then the moment you begin that thing to dawn on you, it doesn't automatically begin to happen. It is a matter of internalizing it. It's a matter of getting the insight, the revelation, then understanding how to work it out. How to do it, working out the spiritual blessings to physical manifestation. Here, the to happen in all the authority that Christ was given has been given to us. And as many as believe that, can they say amen? amen? So, did God give authority over the principalities and powers to Christ? Only three people believe. No wonder the rest are in trouble. Because they have no idea. And that's a problem. If God gave all authority over principalities to Christ, he also gave it to you. Isn't it? And it's very clear in the scriptures again. I'm proving to you from the scriptures so that you don't go doubting and questioning uh, this man is preaching gospel we don't understand. Uh-uh. Tuangalia Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. And it is actually even better now so that kama kudikuwa na doubt that whether the principality has been put under you, now it can be clear for you. It says there in Colossians 2, verse 13. Let me read it from verse 13. And you being dead in your transgression and uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him. Who is him? It is Christ, isn't it? You who are dead in sin, he has given us that circumcision of the heart, not the physical circumcision to become a Jew. It is a physical, it is a spiritual circumcision to become an Israelite, the, the new Israelite of, of God. He says, he has made a life together with him, having forgiven you, 
having forgiven you, having forgiven you, having forgiven you all your transgressions. That was the authority that he had to do it to give you that authority. Why? What could have stopped him from giving you that authority was your sins. He ensured he has forgiven you all your sins. How? Allow God to open your mind to understand this. Now, now, utabarikiwa. In the same happen next, verse 14. How did he forgive you all your transgression? He wiped out the hard writing of requirement that was against us. I always put against me. Hallelujah. Which was contrary to me. <laughs> and he has taken it out of the way. Hallelujah. Having nailed it to the cross. Every hard writing that was contrary to me, I saw it clearly nailed on the cross. What is this that was contrary to us? The hard writing means the accusation of the enemy that he had accused you before God were written as an indebtedness to God because you had violated God in sin, right? Every sin that you committed was written in a paper that he has done this, he has done this, and he has done this. Therefore, he is worthy to die. Right? See that picture? Did you get it? Get the knowledge because that is where we don't get it and we don't enjoy it. All your sins were written in a paper from the day you were born to the day Christ redeemed you. Right? Then that indebted, that certificate where the sins have indicated it is what Christ took upon himself, right? He took that certificate as his own and he nailed it on the cross and he said, Father, I take the sin of this one. Crucify me on his behalf so that all these the devil is accusing him of, I cancel them by my death yes. with lead pen. So all you are seeing that you are written in a paper were cancelled when Christ put them on the cross. Why is it you are dull hearing? Did you get it? Why is it that you doubt what God has done? He is telling us here clearly. Hmm? Having wiped out all the hard writing of requirement that was against us, what was contrary to us and has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. When was that? When Jesus died on the cross. And when Jesus died on the cross, you also died on the cross. Amen. You remember that? So if you see yourself there dying, even so you died to your sin and you resurrected in Christ with no sin. Is that too difficult to believe? No, that is the truth and the reality. Verse 15 now tells you how you have overcome principalities and powers. Because the things you, they were accusing you of, you have nailed them on the cross. They are out of the way. The devil has no room. See, we saw that in Revelation. Hmm? He can no longer accuse you before God. Why? The risk has been written. And it is cancelled. So he has no more power to accuse you before God. Then that means verse 15 belongs to you. Verse 15 says, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. On the cross. He put the wrist over there, nailed it on the cross. Then they sought to humiliate Christ on the cross. But they were humiliated. Why? Paul was saying, if they knew, they couldn't have crucified the king of glory. Why? By crucifying the king of glory, that was the way for you and for me to be connected to the glory. Hallelujah. That's why if you see it, you just live like that. Because now Christ has become Christ in us. Hear me, the Christ in us, the hope of glory. Why? He nailed all our sins on the 
cross. Therefore, we are only waiting for the time of manifestation when he appears. We shall be like him in Dear saint of God, do you want a nature to come and preach to you so that you can believe and we can invite him now together? We write an official letter to God, tell God, God now we are, we are not very sure what the human is expressing is true. Please send us an angel, we will believe you. Do you want us to write a letter to God? <laughs> is there anything unclear there, honestly? Is there anything that you can accuse Pastor Maura of preaching false doctrine? You just, where? And, and you see, when you get the truth, it is the truth that you know that set you free. It's not the truth that you have heard. It is not the truth that you have read. It's not the truth that has been preached to you. It is the truth you personally have received it and have embraced it that set you free. And this is the truth I'm sharing with you this morning. Because it will rebellate you forever from any bondage of the enemy. And then when you begin to walk in the light of what God has given you, then you begin to live that life. We are reminded this morning that we are ambassadors. Hallelujah, isn't it? So God has given us the authority of Christ as his ambassadors. So you have that authority to be Christ's ambassador everywhere you are, right? And, and by the way, even before I go to, to the, the, the authority of an ambassador, God has given us authority over the evil angels, these principalities and powers of darkness. He has given us authority over that. Guess what? So that now you don't write the letter I was prompting you to write. He has also given us authority over the angels. So you don't need a nature to come and say anything better than me. I know better than them. Glory to God. So you better believe it. That is, some of you are looking at me. Where? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. I'm proving from the scriptures so that you can hear CNN. Utoe scriptures zako pia. Hebrews 1 6. Inasema nini? Kama mungu haja kupatia mamlaka juu ya angels. Uko pale. Hebrews 1, 6, there we go. But when he again brings the firstborn, who is Christ, into the world, what does he say? He says about him, hmm? let all the angels of God worship him. Hallelujah. Worship who? Christ. And where are you? <laughs> all right, verse 17. Don't you tell the angels to worship you. I didn't ever say that. I am only reading the scriptures. Verse 7 it says, and the angels he says, who makes his angels, spirit, and ministers a flame of fire. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever. Hallelujah. As you share the throne with Christ, why? You are seated together with him in heavenly places. Then he makes the angels the ministers of fire. When they minister to Christ, they minister to you. Sinequeli. Kwani, huna mamlaka juu ya, ma, ya, ya, ma, ya maraika kivipi? Kama umeshea hiyo throne na yesu, huna mamlaka kweli? Kwa sababu nasema hiyo haitoshi, tusome verse 14, verse Hebrews 1, nasema, and they, are they not, are they not all ministering spirit, the angels now, sent forth to minister to who? For those who are, will inherit Salvation. Are you one of them? That sounds like you now. You can identify with that one. Because you can't identify when they say, and to the son he says, thy throne, O God. You can't identify with that. That is too heavy. That is too heavy for you. Come, this one is light for you. Those who are, what? Ministering spirit to those who are, eh, what? Heirs of salvation. Are you heir of salvation? Are you hoping for salvation? Do you live for salvation? Then you are an heir. And if you are an heir, angels are looking for you to minister to you anyhow. Ata sasa unakutafuta. Kwa sababu, wengiwenu hamtumi yo service ya angels, mulikuja hapa mukiwa unatatasika. Ukuwa shua. Na kwambia, kulikuwa na angel, alikuwa na kukojea kwa mulango pale, Ndiyo kusidikize. Ukampita tu hapo tu. Kihivyo tu. 
akakufuata pale kwa barabara anataka muende pa muende sababu <laughs> anaona you, you don't even care hmm? but he is a, he si anafanya kazi yake kazi yake ni gani si tumeona hapo hmm? they are, are they not all ministering spirit sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation hallelujah and Psalms 103 says it even better hallelujah You know the good thing is when you live by the scriptures you live by the scriptures. <laughs> What did I say? <laughs> Whatever I say. <laughs> Psalms 103 verse 20 says what? Bless the Lord you his angels who excel in strength who do his word heeding the voice of his word. For what? As they listen to the word of God, the word of God ex- instruct them to do what? He says, "Bless the Lord all you his angels you ministers of his who do his pleasure." What is his pleasure? Hmm? Is to minister to the heirs of salvation. So when God speak to the angels, he only give them instruction on your behalf. Do you have authority over them or do you not? Bado unataka even the, the ministry of angel ambaye anakuja kukuprotect na kukuguide na kudirect you it doesn't mean that because he is better than you no he is your he's your servant he's your minister right of course you don't order the angel you don't command an angel he is receive instruction from the commanding center sindio they do god's bidding on your behalf not your bidding from you So don't tell the angel to do this. There are people who who pre who teach it that you can command angels. You don't command angels. They only do the bidding of the master, right? And as they do the bidding of the master, you become a beneficiary. Hallelujah. So, the next one is authority. We have been given authority as Christ ambassadors. So ukienda nje usimamie ufalme kwa utakatifu kwa ujasiri ukifahamu ya kwamba you are an a legitimate hmm? na uko na credentials za nini za kuwa balozi wa ufalme wa Mungu John chapter 17 verse 18 John 17 verse 17 says as Christ was sent by God so have he sent us was he sent with authority yes all authority has been given to me hmm? as he has sent Jesus said as you have sent me so I send them with what the same authority you sent me with I give them that authority that what all of us carry as an ambassador of Christ asubuhi ya leo na mapema hata kama ni adhuri hakuna shida as Christ was sent into the world we have been sent into the world to do what to begana na mapepo peke yetu hapana tumepewa mamlaka principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness and all demonic spirit that causes sicknesses and diseases have been put under our feet you can do whatever you want with them if you just choose to allow them to operate in your life fine hakuna shida they will operate you remember that man who was who was delivered by Jesus he had demon that the name was region how many demons were in that man Eh? Many, eh? <laughs> you don't even want to mention the number. The, okay, there were many. Why were they there? Because he was helpless. But you're not helpless. Christ who cast them out is in you now and he commissioned you to go and cast out devils. You have that authority. How can they be in you? When your authority is to cast them out. Si you unaona know, mahali tumechanganyikiwa? Mapepo haitakiwi kutolewa kanisani ni huko nje. Si ndio? <laughs> If you are in Christ, how can you have demons in you? It's not possible. But I am not saying you can't be oppressed, afflicted by demons as long as you have given them permission. Even those thousand can come. That's what Jesus said. When a demon is cast out of you it goes and roam all over the wilderness eh? then it come back seeking for what 
kama kuna mahali ya kuishi kwa sababu demons don't live in a, just in the air demons look for body to to inhabit right na kuna mapepo mingi ambayo imetolewa sasa eh? na inazunguka huko ikitafuta kama kuna mtu munyonge kiasi hata you know it's like hata kama ni kujificha usiku niingie tu leo asubuhi nita kesho asubuhi nitaenda si ndio yale that's the that's the way the, the devil operate hiyo pepo haitakuja kwa nguvu kwa sababu inajua uko na mamlaka inakuja kutafuta kama unajua na wewe saingia leo nitaenda kesho asubuhi inakuja kivipi kwako na wewe ni mkristo na huna pepo ndani yako wakati na kunyemelea na kwambia tufanye ushalati siku ya leo kesho tutaenda kanisani umeshaingiza moja Did you see it? Yes. That's how they come. They come and ask for permission. They don't come by force. They know uko na authority. Hiyo silence ni kama ile ilikuwa vinguni wakati wa John <laughs> The devil has no power, no authority. See so we saw that. Ephesians chapter Chapter gani? Diona diona yona shida yetu kwa sababu tukisahau hiyo atakuja leo jioni na umesahau. It was very simple. Don't give devil room. Not even room to in- ya kuingia to, to talk to him usimpatie nafasi hata kuongea na yeye of course ataku, atakujaribu kuongeleshe so the best thing is just cast him out or resist him if you engage him as the heaven is above the earth kuta kitu mtashiriki hapo na diposa unaona ukisema mambo ya deliverance wa kristo wengi wanasimama kwa sababu gani kuna kitu wanahisi kama ni mapepo iko ndani ya mioyo yao inaingia kivipi kwa sababu ulifungua mlango hata kama nikamwanya nika tu shetani ataki ile mlango kubwa nikamwanya tu si ana he just sande nilisema he come not like a devil with horns anakuja kama nini angel of light kama humjui hamfahamu mtapatana mahali ndipo sasa ninasema ujue mamlaka yako wewe ni nani uji kinge usimame imara kwa utakatifu tukaona first peter 5 verse 6 to 8 be sober be vigilant why the adversary the devil roams to and fro seeking what anyone inaweza tafuna hana mamlaka inatafuta tu mtu ambaye ako na kaudhaifu kiasi unyonge kidogo but if you know who you are in Christ you will stand you are ground by faith tulisema hii 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 vita tunapigana na shetani we don't need to stretch it so much ni hiyo ni ni religiosity hmm? religiosity ambaye ina to keep occupy like we are doing something to the devil no you don't have to fight the devil and casting and abiding and losing no this is very simple it is be self controlled be sober right when the devil comes resist him stand fast by faith and say i am in christ i was chosen before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless get out of here that's the way you fight the devil oh let me see it so slowly so that you can hear i was predestined to be adopted to be a son of god so devil you are in the wrong address If you want to speak him to him silently speak him to him like that He will go away resist him and he will go stand fast by faith how what does it mean to stand fast by faith it's just standing by what you know you are by faith who are you a child of god if i'm a child of god who am i i'm a winner i'm trying to provoke your emotions again i'm a winner why it is because of Christ in me the hope of glory and he that is in me is greater than the one who is trying to tempt me so how do you do that do you fight them no you resist them you tell them don't bother me go away right 
Stand fast by faith. What is faith? It's who you are in Christ. Kama hufahamu wewe ni nani katika Kristo, huwezi kusimama. Huwezi kupinga. But kama unafahamu wewe ni nani katika Kristo, utasimama imara. Kwa imani. Si kwa nguvu zako, ni kwa imani na hakika utashinda. So we are Christ ambassadors so that you don't have an excuse why you're going to doubt that i give you the scripture 2 Corinthians 5:20 <laughs> we are Christ ambassadors and because we are Christ ambassadors we have authority to act on his behalf so go home and act on his behalf how do you act on his behalf you have authority to preach the gospel you have authority to share the gospel you have authority to witness to sinners you have authority to pray for the sick and they will be healed hallelujah and above all you have authority to do what to cast out devils so you can't cast out devils when you have some devils in you si meona hapo haingiani So jikinge tu dio upate nini mamlaka ya to cast out devils. I release you today with that authority to go and cast out every devil that is in your life. The best person actually to cast out the devil that is troubling you is you. Not a deliverer. Don't depend on anyone. You have authority over devils over other people. What about you when they are tormenting you? You have more authority. Sindio. That is why I keep on telling people and this day that that's what I normally do. If somebody come and tell me they, they are sick and they want me to pray for them, I tell them you have more authority than me over your body. Yes, it's true. I can pray for them and they will be healed, but they will think they are helpless. But if you're a child of God you have authority over your body. So I empower you just to do that. The reason why you see me asking you to pray that things for yourself is because you have authority over your body. When you declare things and you have faith they work for you. More than somebody else saying it to you. Right? I don't want you to depend on me. I want you to be independent. Why you have the same authority I have? Amen. I repeat that you have the same authority I have. Not many pastors can say that. <laughs> I don't want you to depend on me. No, that's not your that is not my ministry to cast out devils out of you. No. My ministry is to feed you with the truth so that you can become perfect complete mature a child of god who can be an ambassador when i'm not there that's what have been called and i want to do that faithfully so that you don't go and tell god pastor did never told us that we have authority no now you know sister mary if your child is sick lay hands on her and pray she will be healed Don't call me at midnight. <laughs> I'm teasing her. <laughs> that's, a, that's authority I'm giving her, isn't it? She has the power to do that and she, it is regal, it is legitimate. She is a child of God. She has authority. If she has authority over her body, she has authority over her child. That's the truth. And that would prove our maturity if we begin to take our position in Christ. Right? Do you want to be <laughs> Do you want to be blessed financially? You see who you <laughs> I don't have authority over you to be financially blessed. You carry that authority and I have already given to you that authority this morning. You never listen to me. I told you your money is supposed to be your servant and you just looked at me and you said how? I was only telling you you have authority to get financially blessed if only you know you are not seeking for a master you are seeking for a servant and when you ask god for money he test to know whether you are able to control that money as your servant or it comes to you to be your master sinikweli 
Those are the things that we don't consider when we are praying, God bless me, I need more money, I want to be blessed, God, I want to be rich. Ah, it's okay to be rich, but hiyo pesa itakutawala ama ukona ujuzi na ukona mamlaka ya kuiweka chini ya miguu yako. Diposa Mungu ataililisi. Amen. Now, I, I, I always have so much for you people, but you never get enough. You, you, you know you are, I, not, not that you don't get enough, you get, you got, you get full very soon. So let, let me stop there. I can spare that for the next time. I think I've given you low, a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and what I have done this morning, I have taken away burden from my shoulders and I have literally thrown it to you. Like that. Did you see that? That's what I'm supposed to do. I have told you now, Jesus told them, now I am going back to the Father. As he has sent me, so I send you. He didn't say I'll come and do it again, no. He told them, and the things you have seen me doing, go and you will do greater things. Hallelujah. So I send you the things that you see Pastor Maura doing here and behind the pulpit, go and do greater things. Hallelujah.